ship as a Navy report calls for a drastic change in attitudes, we investigate strife on the ocean wave. Winter day in Portsmouth, HMS Ark Royal set sail for the Adriatic and a voyage into a new era. Ashore, the families who must wait behind, but the Navy has decided that a woman's place is no longer on dry land. Four years ago, faced with a manpower shortage and a drive for equality, they allowed women to serve at sea, and sailors aboard this warship are now in the vanguard of a new sexual revolution. I don't pretend for one minute that the Navy has got the integration of women into the workforce at sea 100% right. But what I would say is because we all have to live cheek by jowl, is that we put more effort into it than do other people. Fire! 800 women now serve aboard 27 of the Navy's ships. But the new policy has not all been plain sailing. Women's presence at sea has led to lurid tabloid tales of love boats and hanky-panky below deck, and more serious claims that some women are not waving but drowning in a tide of verbal and physical abuse. Right or wrong, perhaps some of this reaction was inevitable, because this is a story of our times, but a story of our times with one crucial difference. Whilst the dilemmas posed by the Navy's sexual revolution are common to society as a whole, on a ship like this, there's no way you can hide. Equality simply has to work. Think about what we're doing, get the anti-flash on first. On the Ark Royal, women are outnumbered 10 to 1. But here, it's all hands on deck as female wrens join male colleagues for a firefighting exercise. Back of the head, pull those straps up evenly. But some of the women here say fighting male attitudes can be just as tough as coping with an emergency. It's easy to see how you could get battle fatigue if you feel like an intruder in a male world. A world where there are waves of criticism from some of the male sailors or matalos. In their own mess, the women let off steam. There's some lads on here that are really, really good blokes, but you're always going to get the one and two, aren't you? They don't agree with wrens at sea and don't like it. Why do you think that is? Because we've invaded their space, because <coughs> before all wrens went to sea, it was all blokes at sea, wasn't it? Fellows were always worse than women. You know, the colours bitches were... They can go really nasty close-out business. How do you mean? What sort of things? Well, if a fella dropped something, is just drop something. But if a woman drops something, it's because she's a woman and she can't cope. We're all pathetic, we're all slags, we're all this, that and the other. A lot of them will think that about everybody. If one person does something wrong, that's it, you've let the side down for all the rest of the rents, which it shouldn't be like that, because we're all individuals, we're all different. But we're all our own person, so. Do they call you slags? I mean, is that why they think you came to see? No, they call you splits. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? The old um, meaning for that is not is because we used to wear skirts with a split up the back or something. But that's not what they say it as. <laughs> you, you ask a matlow what a split is and he'll go, he won't know, because you just, just pass down when you join the mob, I suppose. You've got to call a rent a split, you know what I mean? But the majority of them don't know what it is. The old meaning of it is not offensive, but the way they say you split, it means, you know, you split off. <laughs> so is it, the text that they use it in is not a very nice text. Would any of you consider complaining about this? Why should you? It happens uh, with civilians as well. It's at a petty level. It's nothing that you can take to a higher authority. It's... If we report it, we'll get more grief. It's so low level, there's no point in reporting it. You just give them as much as they give you and they shut up. The captain of Ark Royal says a proportion of women here are generally of higher ability than the men. But some of the men don't see it that way. And there's still a male view that women have to prove themselves and adapt to the rough and tumble of Navy life. Big figure of light movements. You know there's a ladder there. Bang the hose against the ladder. Make sure that ladder's intact. When you've got these sets on, you've got to control your breathing. Deep breaths, deep, slow, 
Despite being monitored by senior officers off duty, the men spoke candidly about their views. They told us that if there was Mickey taking and banter below deck, women should take it like a man. They pass a test for the Navy, so they should be able to take it's, what's coming, basically. It's part of our culture, really. It's what we do, pass a time, take the Mickey out of each other all the time. And if they want equal rights and equal job, then they can take an equal amount of Mickey. What, more Mickey? Less well, no, Mickey? It's, it's the same, it's the same. How I many people take the Mickey out of us all the time? Mm. You know? they, they sit there and moan about it, but they have mouths. They're quite capable of it giving it back. So, I mean, there's no point in sitting there dripping about it. They'll just give us a bit back. Simple, really. And some of them perhaps shouldn't have joined up in the first place. And that's where some of the bad press must be coming from. A lot of them expect the cruise. I think a lot of them did join expecting just to see the world and not have to work in between. And when they get shouted at, a lot of them come back and say, oh, it's because I'm a Rennie shouted at me. Yeah, they take it personally. They take it personally, yeah. They use the Ren thing. Yeah, they use the Ren yeah. thing to yeah, their advantage. Nothing against them. The Rens have to be admired, really, because they're breaking new ground. They're doing something different. And uh, it's not easy for them. I think it's probably harder for them than it is for us. Why do you think people are so resentful, or have been? A lot, a lot of it is, is they think, well, it's a man's world and they don't belong. And, and some people are worried because their wives at home don't trust them, I think, you know? Since Wrens went to sea, six men have been prosecuted for assaults on women. Captain. The extent of verbal abuse is harder to Good gauge. Luck. And Ark Royal Captain Terry Lochran must steer a careful course in this newly liberated Navy. He relies on senior right, officers fine, to decide what sailors banter, what serious away. insult. There is a, a naval culture and with it goes a, a lot of nicknames. You just have to take my word for it that most of it is not serious. But if, if of course, it comes again in the chain of command, if anyone hears that, that sort of language going on, and of course it's, it's much more likely to, hear, to be heard in the, uh, in the presence of a um, uh, senior ratings, perhaps, then I, I would expect them to jump on it. Slag, you'd expect them to jump on that? Oh, certainly. But the view from the bridge is not necessarily echoed below deck. In the ship's control room, some junior ratings are at odds with senior officers over a woman's place aboard ship. They're concerned about what would happen in a fire. But when they tried to tell us their views, one of the senior officers listening to the interview stepped in. There's a lot of small girls, uh, sort of, I don't know, less than five and a half foot, you know, and carrying someone who weighs 13 stone out of a space, I mean, I don't know if they've been down any of the ladders, but they are quite steep, and, I mean, I wouldn't... I, sometimes I wouldn't I like to attempt it, especially with someone like Gilly, who's, who's fairly well built, but, I mean, built, some yeah. of the girls, I mean... What's the first, I, I, first action? Could you just be quiet? Yeah, I've been I mean, if, this if you're going to carry yeah. this interview no, out, you yes. can, what but do you need, I am. Do you have to answer this, Sarah. What is the oh, first action? Oh, you need to understand this. What is the first action in the event of any emergency? Raise the alarm, sir. Raise the alarm. So what do we do? We shout, fire, fire, fire. We get help. So what, do you, what are the circumstances no, where you I'm might saying, have What I'm saying is, sir, is um, when the fire party is made up of wrens, and that is our backup, yeah. then it, it's, it's not going to work, is it? Especially when you get someone who's backing you up, who's, who's five and a half foot and is carrying Brum, who's 20 stone now. It's, it just doesn't work. And, that, and that's really why we don't, we don't uh, accompany them in the fire party, as in attack party and support party. Sorry, sir, for the back chatting. Yeah, I hope it's no, not going to affect right. my... Well, I mean, but do you agree with that? No, well, he's made the point now, the first thing we always do is raise the alarm. Uh, and I, we raise the alarm because we get help. We disengage, we disengage port. Main diver of our storm. Main diver of port. How would this lad get me out of a machinery space? I'm 16 stone. What do you weigh? I weigh 11 stone, sir. Would you be able to get me out? I doubt it, sir, no. No. Would a Ren be able to get me out? Together, so we might stand a better chance. Together, you would, but see individually. I think that's the point. Individually. That was the point, though, was it? I, mean, well, I think it was. Point, that is the point. Was, no, we work as a team. We work as a team. Yeah. It's all the team business. It might need an extra person in the team, and I might uh, might acknowledge that point, because if you've got a team of two wrens, you might need an extra person in it. But at the end of the day, it's all teamwork, and we rarely do things uh, individually these days. It's down here in the engine room of the ship that criticisms can wound most. Wrens working here are the butt of male remarks about the weaker sex. 
At 18, Alison Weston is the youngest and smallest of the 100 wrens aboard ship. And she, like others, has had to cope with the carping in return for a career at sea. Because of my age and my size, I got quite a bit of stick, but as soon as someone else new come on board, they get the attention and the stick and they forgot about me and just let me go on my job now. Some men on this ship would say you shouldn't be doing this kind of work. What do you make of that? They've got their own opinions. The older blokes, I can, like, I, I can understand, but there's some, like, blokes that are, like, 19, 20, they joined up the when wrens were at sea then, and now I don't think they've got any room to talk because they shouldn't have joined the Navy if they knew wrens were going to be in it. For young wrens at sea in a male world, having someone to look up to is vital. But whilst there's no shortage of topless models aboard Ark Royal, there are few female role models. There are five female officers here, and Frankie Putter is just one of two female senior rates. At work, Frankie has the respect and admiration of the men. If they give you a bit of stick, you give it back and you stick up for yourself. You don't go and cry in the corner. You prove to them that you can do the job as well as they can. You've got to be one of the lads. You've got, to work, you've got to come down to be one of the lads to mix in, but you've also, at the same time, got to maintain your femininity. But away from work in the petty officer's mess, there's still deep division over this revolution in Navy life. Men here disagree on a woman's worth. The die may be cast, but a few find it hard to play the game and bend with the winds of change. And relaxing with male colleagues, Frankie Putter must defend her sex. She argues women have had a civilizing effect aboard ship. <coughs> Whereas you would have had men living with men constantly all the time, and only meeting females when they were shoreside, the tension's gone out. Maybe it makes them behave more mature, more like what they would in front of the girlfriend or their wife, rather than Jack the lad. We've all done leadership courses, but nobody, nobody, it's man management you taught. You're not taught woman management. You're not, you're not, honestly, nobody teaches you woman yeah. management. I can't put yeah. up with a little girl coming up to me, crying her eyes out, because she just got a dear John off her freaking boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> get down a mess, get some cans down you go. You know, yeah. it's not, I, I haven't been trained to look after young girls at sea. And it's totally wrong, you know, the hierarchy should be training the senior race True, I, I agree to with deal that. with yeah. women at sea, and they're not yeah. doing it. Well, I agree, I mean, you think about the majority of management are married men, right? Maybe to their own daughters, stroke sons, right? And look after their own daughters. Why should the wet nurse little girls? That's right? why I think, like, Why should they? Now, I've been in a situation where I've got to pick sort of two, two and two guys. But there's been two women there. I'd, I'd see me grab another two guys, right? Fully known, full well, that these guys that get on with the job, right? And the girls there, well, fine, I'll sort something else out for you later on. Why have you done that? Because I want the job done, done quickly and over and without me dragged out and dragged out. I've got to get home. Right. How do you know they're going to drag you out there? I'm entitled to my own opinion. Cut that one. Yeah, You've yeah. got young blokes who haven't got the physical right. stature. Yeah. Some of the wrens are better equipped to do yeah. the job that you're asking the young bloke to do. Yeah, because it's so good as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah. 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 yes. the guy will not be put down. Well. The guy will stand there. He will try he'll to stand there and he'll do it because he's not going to lose face in front of his mate. It's the old macho thing, isn't it? Whereas a little girl, he's going to go, I cannot lift that. I can't do it. Exactly. We have to say, I cannot do it. It's his job. We have jobs is, that uh, involve uh, a job that, that needs a small person, right. and a, a yeah. wren is yeah. perfect. We're getting inside yeah. fuel tanks yeah. on, yeah. on aircraft, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. and then they, 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 you know, they don't complain like that, that you're, you're too big. You know? yeah. Yeah, Jim, we're not disputing that. We're just in, in in some areas they are as good as, if not better. Yeah. Yeah. But in the marine engineering department, there is a there is a fact. There are some jobs that they cannot do. So when the bomb came through in the, in the accident on board. There were some wrens in the firefighting team that just wouldn't go in to the situation because they were having relationships with people that may have been in that area. Yeah. I mean, that is a fact. I've seen it. Yeah. I'll give you that point. Being sandwiched together in a maze of corridors, it's hard to ignore what the opposite sex might have to offer. But male and female quarters are strictly segregated. So this is the beginning of the women's quarters, is it? Yes. And um, how far is this away from the men's quarters, then? Physically, as far as the ship's concerned, we're quite close, but in order to get to them, we'd have to walk quite away along the passageways. And this is one of the women's messes, is it? Yes, this is the women's mess. Oh. 
So this is the showers area here. How many people share the showers area? Um, there's three messes down here, and um, basically there's 12 to 15 people in a mess, so we all share the three showers in here. It sounds really bad, except we all wear different watches. You just get so used to it that you don't... I bet you long for a bath, don't you? First thing I do when I get home would be a bubble bath, I think. <laughs> In theory, men and women are separated by a no-touching rule. But relationships do happen. Two couples have been disciplined for intimacy. And policing affairs of the heart is a delicate business. The line from the top is to urge young men and women to be discreet. We can't have uh, hordes of sailors walking up and down the flight deck holding hands with each other. This is, this is not what we're about. It's not the atmosphere and the image that we want to create. I personally wouldn't want to be part of a world where men and women didn't generate a spark between them. Um, and, and of course, inevitably, that, that happens on board. Um, but the, my experience in the last year is one that uh, genuine relationships, uh, they are extremely discreet about them, and they, they progress um, on, a, on a perfectly normal basis, but they keep it very much to themselves. Even if the message at sea is make war, not love, there's no stopping you ashore. Sue McShafery met her husband aboard Ark Royal but did her courting on dry land. She conducted her relationship in an exemplary fashion. But still, romancing a man below you in rank is not without its problems. Did you find yourself having to discipline him or tell him off at all? Once. There was, I was on the gangway and um, during the morning we have to scrub out, we've got the wooden decks. I said, right, go and get a bucket of water and I'm not scrubbing out, that's a woman's job. That was when we were already seeing each other, but he did it. But we just didn't talk to each other for about three days. <laughs> what did you think when he said that's a woman's job? Oh, well, I just said, look, I'm in charge. That's, that's the only time. The rest of the time we've managed to avoid each other like the plague. Now married, she serves alongside her husband, the first time a married couple have been to sea. But they can't be together, they must pass like ships in the night. Is it difficult being married and not being in married quarters, not being able to see each other, hug each other? Have a... yeah. yeah. Sometimes when you've had a really horrible day, the only thing you want is a cuddle and you can't have it. Well, you can't have it off the person that really matters. You come down, or well, I come down here and slam about and slam the doors and slam the locker and then go and soak on my bed. When really all I want is a cuddle and you, you just can't have it. But you have to distance yourself, which is quite hard, especially when we get back ashore. Because you spent all this time avoiding each other and then you're like, suddenly thrown together. You Martin. have to sort of you know, get to know each other again. What's that like, getting to know each other again? <laughs> it's a nightmare. Would you go to sea again with your husband? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Well, it's not exactly the way to start off a married life, is it? I want different things now. I want to be a housewife and one of the minority. I want to be a housewife and I want to go and have children and live in my own house. The Ark Royal docks in the Italian port of Bari. Away from the ship, a chance for sun, sea and socialising. And now women have a man in every port there's plenty of company for a drink and a chat. What you do when you're a young, drunken sailor is not much different for men or women. Andrew, Woo! Michelle, Wendy, Claire. Claire. But it's not all wine, women and song. Other sailors have different considerations. Kathy Weston had to leave her 15-month-old daughter in Britain to go to sea. A painful decision, and there's been a strong reaction from some of Kathy's colleagues aboard ship. Shock, really, I think. Shock. But they're not used to it. It's alien to them that I'm away from my daughter. You know, they think, how can you be a mother to, to a little girl or a little child and, and be away from her or him? And as I said, I think it's just the same as what it is for, for a man to be away from their child. From the Italian sun to a chilly day in Cornwall, where Cathy's parents look after baby Victoria. Cathy's husband is a Royal Marine and also works away from home. Meg and Humphrey Green will look after Victoria until Cathy gets back in September. Letters home underline the pain of separation. Darling Victoria, I love you more than life itself. 
We should be going alongside in about a week's time. And as soon as we do, I'll be sure to phone you. And she did, didn't she? She called. Yeah. Kathy's mum is fiercely supportive of her daughter and her daughter's life. There's a picture of mummy. She had a contract to finish, and so she had to do it. Um, with women going to sea, I don't suppose. In this day and age, it doesn't matter male and female both go abroad or go on board ship. I mean, if they're educated enough for it, why not? It's, uh, I don't think they should be penalised just because they're a woman. It's not just aboard ship that women pay a price for the demands of a male profession. Here in Portsmouth, on a naval estate, a minority question whether a male-dominated navy anticipated the emotional tussles equality could mean. Tony, Marion and Karen were all deserted when their navy husbands met women aboard ships. All three are next-door neighbours, all three are now being evicted by the Navy. I think the decision for Wrens to go to sea was totally made by men, and I don't think it was really thought out that um, about, you know, marriage problems, what may, may occur. I think it's very naive of the Navy to say, oh, you know, conduct your relationships ashore, you know, almost like as long as you get to the bottom of the gangway, you walk up alone, that's OK. And I don't, I don't think... I think it's very naive of them to say that. If you're having a bit of pressure in your married life, it's easy to just find a shoulder to cry on, isn't it? And I mean, these girls are 18, 19, 20. I mean, it's flattering. My husband's 34. He must have been flattered that a younger girl was, like, interested. For hundreds of years, this has been a man's navy. And now, for the last few years, it's been mixed and it hasn't worked. If they want to go say. to sea, let them go on a ship. They, they've got enough ships. They can give a ship to women crews. Derek Anthony used to captain a submarine. Now he navigates the troubled waters of equal opportunities. One of the dilemmas he faces is how to deal with emotions aboard ship, being sensitive to inevitable attraction between the sexes whilst insisting sailors behave by the book. In part of the discretion of relationships is the acknowledgement of the rank structure within the Royal Navy. Uh, and we, we do not encourage in any way, in fact, we thoroughly discourage uh, relationships developing between people of different ranks. But how can you fall in love with somebody on the shore, then fall out of love with them on the ship? This is part of naval life. Uh, people join the Navy, they join the Navy for an opportunity of a career at sea. And they have to acknowledge the limitations that come with that. Concerns on shore about women's role aboard ships have led to calls for a sea change in the Navy. Public Eye has had access to a report which says there's a drastic need to change attitudes. It found that women were subject to verbal and physical harassment and a minority were very unhappy at sea. It recommends steps to ease women's passage in what traditionally has been a very male institution. The report says a proportion of men from all ranks were hostile towards integration, a significant minority of men were overtly sexist, behaviour that may cause individual suffering. Down the corridors of the Naval Training College at Dartmouth, young recruits get their first baptism into a bastion of male power. And whilst the Navy's internal report says integration is working well, if unevenly, it also acknowledges the difficulties in turning the tide of four centuries of male tradition. Stand by. A key recommendation is about training, not in physical fitness, but in attitudes. It's all very well learning to climb ropes ashore, but male hostility at sea can undermine women trying to climb the greasy pole to promotion. The report says there are arguments for more management instruction and specific training for young male recruits to nip sexism in the bud. What do you think about a training programme to deal with the issues of integration? Well, these issues, bear in mind that females actually only form about 8% of the Royal Navy, and it's a very important part of what we do. And, of course, it has a high profile, as this programme uh, clearly acknowledges. Uh, but there are lots of other things that we have to train people to do as well. And integration of females at sea and into the Navy is an important part of that. But it is only a part of that. 
We're trying to drive it into day-to-day -day management, not continuously treat it as a special case. But back on Ark Royal, in the stormy waters of sexual revolution, there's still no guarantee that what's said in private doesn't affect what happens in public. As long as the comments come, it's, it's just going to be a ever-decreasing circle. It's going to be trying to prove yourself at all times. So what sort of hope is there? I mean, how can you change this man's world, do you think? It's education and time. How long is it going to take? How long is a piece of string, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't know. Yes. We always talk about when's an emergency. OK, maybe they won't cope in that, but what about everyday life, the job they're doing? They do a great job, in my opinion. And, and, and I think that's the opinion yeah, of a lot of yeah. people. Your opinion, right? I will stick to my own opinion. Right? And <clears throat> no one's going to move me. I mean, I've been, been in the Navy 20 years, right? and I'm certainly not going to change with the times. If you came to a situation where you were at action stations, come the end of the day, you are here to do a professional job and you will get together as a team, male or female, you will be a team, work for each other and get on with the I job. Agree, you're allowed your views yeah. in the mess. You can say what you want in the mess. When you walk out the door and you go up the ladder, you then become part of HMS Art Royal Ship's company yeah. and you're there for HMS Art Royal full stop. So you make it work, regardless of what you feel. You make it work. But can you really make it work regardless of what you feel? The view from the bridge is that they have, and they will. I would have thought that if you find sexual harassment or verbal abuse on board here, then it's, it, it must be of a far less order than you would find in the workplace elsewhere. I'm proud of what we've achieved. 76 years after women won the vote, 20 years after the law against discrimination, women aboard this ship are in the front line of another battle for equal rights. It's a war of attrition, of low-level skirmishes, the occasional truce. Where one giant leap in four centuries of male tradition is another small step in the struggle for equality. The Late Show presents a special week of programmes from India. Good always triumphs over evil. From the new age of violence on the big screen to Western influences on architecture, discover the changing face of India. It's a game which is, according to some serious thinkers, holding the country together.